Okay, let's keep going with tree diagrams. So we've got 2% of employees in a company are drug users. A test was developed to identify the drug users. If a person is a drug user, then the test returns positive results 99% of the time. If a person is not a drug user, the test returns, the test returns negative result 96% of the time. Construct a tree diagram to display this information. All right, so a couple of things that I notice when I'm reading through this. I see the word if here, right? And if, I saw, here we go, an if. Right? Those are conditional phrases, so I just want to be aware of that. All right, so that means they're going to go on the second set of branches because the second set of branches are always your conditional statements. So when it looks, when I take a look at this problem, it looks like I have a, an, a piece of information, a number about whether or not I'm a drug user, and then whether or not I get positive test results. And I just want to say, like, if we're looking at this, I have one number about whether or not I'm a drug user and two numbers about whether or not I test positive or negative. So the, the categorical variable of being a drug user, since it only has the one number associated with it, that is gonna be on my first set of branches. And because I have two numbers associated with positive and negative test results, that's gonna be on the second set of my branches. And that makes sense because I've got the condition about whether I'm a drug user or not a drug user. So let's go set up this tree diagram. All right, so here we go. I got my first set of branches. Okay, so over here we're gonna have drug user and not a drug user. Because again, the only, the, the categorical variables we got in this problem are yes, I use drugs or no, I don't. And then based on that, how did my drug test go? Did it flip positive or negative? So it says right here, 2% of employees are drug users. I'm gonna take that 2%, I'm personally gonna write it as a decimal. I prefer decimals over percentages, um, just because when I go to calculate them on my calculator, they have to be in decimal form. Now this is complementary. So if 2% of employees are drug users, it's implied that 98% are not. Okay, all right, now let's start doing the rest of these, right? So we've got if a person is a drug user, so I'm gonna go along this branch, then I'm gonna get positive results 99% of the time. So I need to draw another two set of branches about whether I test positive or negative. Okay, so let's see this. So again, we go back to this. If a person is a drug user, so I'm definitely along that top branch, that's what that condition says, then the test results, excuse me, the test returns positive results 99% of the time. So I'm gonna put the 99 right here, okay? Now again, these have to be complementary. So if you're a drug user, that means that about 1% of the time, you get away with it, all right? Fantastic. So let's look at this one. This says, if a person is not a drug user, so I'm on this branch, I'm on this condition, then the test returns negative results, right? And that's a good thing. If you're not a drug user, you do want it to turn, return a negative, right? But then it also implies, because these are complementary, that this number has to be 0.04. And if there was any confusion as to where am I getting 0.01 and 0.04, let me spell it out, right? So if you just had the number 0.99 here and you weren't sure what to draw, these two numbers have to add up to one, right? Because your sample space has to add up to one. So I can take one and subtract 0.99 from it and find out that that probability was 0.01. And over here, again, if I was given the 96% um, statistic and I know these two have to add up to one, use the complement rule, subtract it, and then it's gotta be 0.04, all right? Okay, so there's my tree diagram. So just, just so we can, talk about this, right? I basically have four possibilities, right? So I could have this outcome of I'm a drug user and I test positive, right? I could be a drug user and I test negative. I could be not a drug user and I test positive, or I could not be a drug user and I test negative, right? 
So it, all of us would fall into one of these two categories, right? I'll, I'll tell you for me personally, I'm, I'm not a drug user. Well, actually, I'm, I, no, I am. I, I want to be clear. I'm not a drug user. But I actually, I wouldn't know offhand if I was going to test positive or negative. I'd have to actually take this, this drug test. Um, but yeah, all of us would fall into one of these two categories. So if I wanted to find the probability of drug user and positive, I would multiply these two numbers. Drug users are negative, multiply these two numbers. So 0 0.02, 0 0.01. Dr not drug user and positive, 0 0.98, 0 0.04, right? Not drug user and negative, 0 0.98 times 0 0.96. And whatever those four products were, they would have to add up to one because it's got to add up to our sample space. Or our sample space, their probabilities have to total out to one. All right, so once you get your tree diagram set up, then let's go look at what branches they want you to include, all right? So the first question here says, what is the probability that it te the test returns a positive result? All right, so if I'm talking about a positive test result, I gotta think, well, how can I get a positive test result? And I see two branches for this one. I see I could be a drug user and get a positive test result, or I could not be a drug user and get a positive test result. Right? Those are the two ways that the plus lit up. So if I wanna figure out the answer to this one, let me scooch this up so we all have enough room to see everything. All right, if I want the answer to this one, if I want the probability that I test positive, again, there are two branches for that. So it's the probability of drugs, drug user and positive, and then some of us are not drug users, and we still might get that false positive. Okay. Now these are disjoint events. These can't happen at the same time. You can't both be a drug user and a not, not a drug user. Right, you, feel, you fit into one of those two categories. But let's see what um, products we need. So I need 0.02 times 0.99. And I want to add that other disjoint branch of 0.98 times 0.04. All right, let's see what this, this answer winds up being. So we've got 0.02 times 0.99. And I want to add to it the other branch of 0.98 times 0.04. And it looks like I'm looking at about 6% of the time. All right, so it's technically 0 0.059, but about 6% of the time when you do a drug screen using this test, you're gonna get a positive test result, okay? All right, so if I scooch over to B, I think I can still keep most of my tree diagram in view if I do that. Part B says, what is the probability that a person is not a drug user and the test returns a negative result? Okay, so the buzzword I'm seeing in there is and. Okay, so if it's an and, I gotta find the, the branches that are in play. What are my respective branches? So let me do this. I want the probability that you are not a drug user and negative. All right, so if I wanna figure out my branches, again, not a drug user is this bottom branch and testing negative is this other bottom branch. So we're bottom, bottom. So this is gonna be 0.98 times 0.96. And when I crunch that number, it should be pretty high, 98 times 96. So about 94% of the time. Okay, great. So let's go take a look at what C is asking us to write. I'm, I'm gonna lose the view of my tree diagram, but I'll, I'll reference back to it. All right, so if we look at part C, all right, this one is saying, given, given that the test, excuse me, given that the test returns a positive result, what is the probability that a person was a drug user? All right, so if we're gonna tell you, hey, you tested positive, we wanna know what's the likelihood that you were actually doing drugs. But the buzzword in there is given. And I want to remind us of our conditional probability formula. We have the probability of A given B is the probability of A and B over the probability of B. Right? That's, that's something we, we're allowed to use any time. Now, the condition goes after the vertical bar. So I'm going to put the plus here because I'm told I'm getting a positive test result. And then I want to know the likelihood that somebody did drugs. So I want the probability that I had a drug user given I tested positive. That's what I'm looking for in this problem. So if I look at this map, right, I'm gonna go drug and positive, and then I'm gonna put that in ratio to positive. So I want the probability of drug and 
positive over the probability that I tested positive. Okay, so let's go see what branches are in play. Once, once you get your tree diagram, it's always a matter of, okay, what branches are in play? All right, if I want drug and positive, I wanna multiply those two respective branches. So let's look for drug and positive. So if I scooch back up here just for a moment, drug and positive looks like 0.02 times 0.99. So I want those. All right, so there's my numerator. Let me push this back down. All right, and we're gonna go drug and positive. So I'm gonna go 0.02 times 0.99, okay? Whatever that number is, great. I, I will get to it in just a moment. Now, the, the next one, the probability that I tested positive, we actually looked at this in part A, but it's, it's worth repeating. All right, so I wanna figure out how many branches are involved when I talk about testing positive. And again, there are two ways to test positive. You could be a drug user and test positive, or you could not be a drug user and test positive. So I need to do on the denominator this product and this product, right? So I need on the denominator 0.02 times 0.99. I also need added to that 0.98 times 0.04 because there are two branches involved. They're disjoint, so I will add those products. So I'm gonna multiply these two numbers, and I'm gonna multiply these two numbers, and I'm gonna add their respective products. All right, and that's just what we did in part A, right? We multiplied those two numbers multiplied those two numbers, right? And through PEMDAS, we did the multiplication first and then we added. All right, so when I head down over here, so we're gonna do, oops, let me get that straightened out, I hope. Maybe not perfect, maybe that. Okay, so here we go. On the denominator, we have 0.02 times 0.99 plus 0.98 times 0.04, okay? So we're gonna crunch this, and then we just wanna be careful on our calculators. I'm gonna do the numerator first and the denominator second, and then I'll do the division. So I like to break this up because it's, it's a little cumbersome on my calculator to try and remember all of the parentheses. So I just like to split things up. 0 0.02 times 0 0.99. So my numerator here is 0 0.0198. And on my denominator, I'm gonna take that number and add to it 0.98 times 0.04. So it looks like my denominator is 0.059. And that, that number seems familiar. We got that in part A. And then I just wanna see what these two, these two this ratio is. So 0.0198 divided by 0.059, it looks like I'm working at about 34%. And you don't have to write 34%. You could leave it as 0.36, you could leave it as 0.34. I just want us to see some options there. All right, so that'll wrap up our tree diagram section. We're moving on to counting problems.